Hello everyone, as always I'm Bart Massey. Once again welcome to Open Source Software Development. Today we're going to talk about something called validation and verification, which is how we check whether our work's good and we're going to sort of take an open source view of that and see how things go with open source VNV. Hope you're staying safe and well out there. Let's go ahead and get started. So, validation and verification, VNV in the trade. And, you know, the industry way is to do testing mostly and also testing. There are really three ways you can verify and validate your code. Make sure that the code is self-consistent, that it does something sensible within itself, and that it follows its requirements, that it does what it, the requirements said it was going to do. One of those ways is inspection. You can look at the code, try to understand what it's doing and how it's going to work. That's actually an incredibly powerful method that gets underused quite a bit. It's less common than it probably should be. Testing the standard way, run your program in different ways and see if it does what it's supposed to do. And finally, something called formal methods, which don't have anything to do with sort of the personal notion of formality, but rather are about using proofs and logic and mathematics to actually formally verify properties of your program, make sure that the program is correct, mathematically correct in certain ways. So, Open source, unlike the proprietary world, makes pretty good use of inspection. Inspection is one of the places where we're perhaps stronger. Uh, the idea of inspection is that people look at the code, and we are set up these days with things like GitHub itself, which allows everybody easy access to look at the code, an issue tracker, which allows people a place to take notes on the code and make suggestions, etc. We have the pull request model, which suggests that people look at code as it comes in before it's committed. And all those tools together mean that code gets looked at probably more than it would in a typical industry situation, probably more carefully by the person who wrote it, and certainly more carefully by people who aren't the person who wrote it, which turns out to be incredibly useful. A saying Raymond, Eric Raymond attributed to Linus Torvalds, many eyes make all bugs shallow, is the idea that we can make sure that we don't have bugs, not necessarily by just running the code, but by just looking at it. And it's a really powerful idea. So how do we get this inspection thing done? First of all, you need to show all your code. You need to make sure that everything is out there and available to be inspected. Inspecting pieces when you can't look at the rest turns out to be really hard. And not just everything should be accessible, but everything should be understandable. You need to have your code in the kind of shape you needed to debug it. You need to have it cleanly formatted and reasonably commented and all those things that make it possible to debug code also make it possible to inspect code. There is a such a thing as documentation intended for developers rather than end users. And it's honestly in a lot of open source projects, the more important kinds of documentation. You typically will see notes in blog posts, in documents lying around the code base, in comments inside the code base that explain to the reader, how does this work? what kinds of things should you be watching for as you read it. That's really super important. And finally, isn't enough to just make stuff available for inspection. You really want to invite it. You really want to encourage people to take a look at your code and find the issues with it. This has been especially productive in things like open source cryptography, where uh, tremendous leverage has been obtained in a lot of cases by simply inviting people to look at the code and try to understand whether it is going to work right or not. Testing is sort of the boring standard thing to do. You uh, Code may have passed an inspection. That doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, 
so you might want to run it and see if it works at all see if it does what it's supposed to do this has been the standard industry way for as long as i've been in industry to vnv code is to actually write some tests of various kinds run them and see if they pass that's a practice that's been carried in from industry to the open source community it's also something the open source community has led the ways in in some ways with agile methods type unit testing being something that was driven as much by open source as the other way around so the first important thing is that there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding about tests what do I mean when I say a test well it's an input or more generally putting the program in a state that's a known state together with an output. What do I expect to happen when I put the program in this state when running it? And it's important to have both parts. A test is not just an input. If you just stuff things at your program and see what it does, that's not really testing. It, again, this is scientific method stuff like debugging. You need to have a hypothesis. You need to have a, a predicted output of the test. And in fact, there's this whole concept of tests that should fail. Now that's a dumb idea. The test doesn't fail, but the a negative test says that if I input this, the program will refuse to take it. If I do ask to do this, the program will time out before it finishes. And those are important tests too. Don't just test that it works right on correct inputs. T check that it catches and rejects incorrect inputs. How do you get this, you know, if a test is an input-output pair, how do you get the output? This is what's known as the effective oracle problem, and it's a hard problem, right? If I had some way to immediately know what the output of a program was supposed to be for a given input, I wouldn't really need to write the program. And so I need to have some tricks for this. One way is to test a faster version against a slower version that's known to be correct. That means you're going to use less tests probably than you'd like because tests take a long time to run in the slow version, but that way I can stuff an input into the slow version, see what output I get, then make sure the fast version gets the same output. I can work backwards. I can find outputs for which I know what input should be able to produce it and try to do things that way. That can be useful. And sometimes there are easy inputs. If I'm testing a program that multiplies numbers, I know what the output should be when either input is zero. And so that kind of thing can be done sort of by hand. And so that's a very superficial discussion, but there are quite a few techniques for actually deciding what and how to test. Uh, an important note here is that testing doesn't actually work. <laughs> That's the problem with testing. Look, the smallest program you're usually going to write has a huge space of possible inputs that you could give it, and if any one of those is wrong, the program is wrong in some sense. And so there's no way that I can exhaustively test meaningful size programs. All I can do is supply some test cases. <laughs> and verify that it works on those. I can prove that the program fails. If it fails on the few things I've chosen to test, I can't prove it succeeds in general on things I haven't tested. Another problem with testing is that tests give minimal insight. When a test fails, typically I don't get much understanding of why that test failed. I can make some guesses, I can start the debugging process, but unlike inspection, where when I see a bug, a defect during inspection, I have a pretty good idea what that defect is, what's causing it. When I see a failure during testing, now I've got to debug, now I've got to do defect analysis, so that's grim. Sort of the best you can be hoped for is what people do. You try to pick enough interesting cases to test that the program can kind of work. The combination of inspection testing is really powerful. If I had to pick just one, I would almost always pick inspection, but a program that's been both inspected and tested 
is probably a good program because they catch different kinds of bugs. It has is probably a better program because they catch different kinds of bugs. We often talk about black box versus white box testing, although it was pointed out to me recently that that terminology may need to change in light of current events. I certainly don't mean anything by it. But opaque testing is where I test without any knowledge of the implementation of the thing I'm testing. I treat the program as a blob that does things and I try to give it things to do and see whether it does the right thing and that's a really useful technique because the more you know about how the box works inside the more you're going to sort of bias your tests to meet what's going on in there on the other hand sort of clear box testing where I use my knowledge of the implementation to construct tests is another powerful technique because now I can say, well, I wonder what would cause that if statement I'm kind of suspicious of to do the wrong thing. And you can try to supply tests like that. So both are valuable. They tend to work together. You tend to want to do some of each. What's a test domain? Well, we divide the input or the output up to sort of say that, well, you know, a lot of inputs are similar. There again, if I'm doing a multiplication thing, I probably want to test a negative number, a positive number, zero and one, minus one. You know, once I've tested those five cases, a lot of the testing I need to do, you know, I sort of would be surprised if my multiplication routine worked for 17 times 15, but didn't work for 19 times 15. That would be a little weird. And so I really might want to sort of group things up into small groups and find a representative from each group. Now, that doesn't cut things down that much, but in a lot of real cases, but it helps a little. And Another way to get those domains is using formal methods, which we'll talk about in a bit. Another way is to actually have a proof that you only need one representative from the following 2,000 domains, and that's sufficient. And that can be really super powerful and is almost never done in practice. We sort of test at various phases during testing. What should we be doing? Well, we should be testing that the system as a whole at the end works in a way that's acceptable. We should be testing that each individual function or you know, procedure, at least each individual use, interesting function or procedure actually works the way it's supposed to. That's called unit testing because that, those functions or procedures are referred to collectively as units. Integration testing, as we put modules together, we'd like to test the modules beforehand. And a very important kind of testing, regression testing. The idea is that the test suite in general, and except for very large programs where sometimes you need to cut it down, but in general, it's a good idea never to remove a test. The idea is that as I find bugs in the software, I should add a test that detects that bug and leave it in the test suite after I've repaired the bug. And that way, when somebody else reintroduces the bug later, which is a surprisingly common thing, I will have some indication of that. Regression testing, very, very good idea. Um, so we also talk about sort of testing methods. There's a lot of sort of tricks for building tests. One thing is, that if I divide the outputs, expected outputs in the program up coarsely enough, for example, crashes or doesn't crash, maybe my specification says that the program won't crash on any input. Well, now I can feed it random inputs, just literally throw garbage at it, or maybe interesting kinds of garbage, and see if I can make the program crash. Fuzz testing is a useful thing sometimes. User tests, what the heck does that mean? That tends to mean that we throw the code out there for the users to try out, see if anything, if they find any problems. That's a thing open source does really well. You're not surprised by that. 
we put code out there all the time and ask users to play with it. We make it free, we make it freely available, we make it easy to use. We tend to attract sophisticated users who can try things that less sophisticated users might not try. This can be a powerful technique. You hate to rely only on it, but it can be a powerful technique. Um, deriving your tests from the code base and from the code coverage is a great idea. Deriving the tests from domains like we talked about earlier is a great idea. Yeah, again, let me emphasize regression testing. Bugs can come back, tests are expensive, so run the tests after every change. And definitely when you're debugging, add regression tests to the test suite. There's this idea floating around that sort of originated in the Agile community of test-driven development. You write tests for your unit typically first, and then you code the unit, and before you ever start coding the unit, you run the tests, verify that it fails them all, and then start making it pass them until you've made it pass them all. This is a really powerful technique. I don't ever do it because it's a lot of work, but to a certain extent, it would, it's a good idea. You probably should be writing your unit tests before you write the unit at least to some extent, you should be writing your integration tests before you write the module. You should be writing your system tests before you assemble the modules into a system. And that gives you some idea when you're done that the thing is working right. In the open source community, like I say, everything's pretty code centric and everything's pretty tool driven. And so we try to automate as much of this process as we reasonably can. We automate the testing in particular using uh, continuous integration, continuous development tools, CI, CD. And that means that as you add things to the code, it gets automatically tested by the test suite. And so CI tools are fantastic. There's lots and lots of neat stuff out there. And in particular for this course, both GitHub and GitLab have built-in CI CD tools. I would encourage you to investigate them. GitHub's in particular are quite easy to use and almost turn the crank easy to use. And it's really great to be in a position where every time you add a commit to the code base that those tests are run and you verify they pass. Program builds and runs tests, passes tests. Coverage testing is an important idea in testing. I'm not going to go into so much detail here, but certainly we've found out that code that has never been run during testing is much more likely to have defects that weren't discovered. And so we use tools like the GCOV tool if you're doing C, C++ to try to find out how much of the statements in the program, how much of the branches, how much of whatever have been actually executed in the course of testing. And we try to get as close to 100% as we can with reasonable effort so that everything's adequately covered. It's really important to keep your testing infrastructure up to date. I remember when I first installed Perl back when it was a new thing in about 1988 probably it I installed it ran it on my bot ran the test suite for it on my box and it failed probably 30% of its tests in some ways that was heartening it meant that it had a good comprehensive test suite in other ways it was disheartening probably shouldn't be shipping it until you've fix the bugs that the tests indicated. Really important to keep your tests up to date. Really important that your tests are runnable automatically, like they were with this Perl thing. And the test failures really need to be logged as tickets at least until they get fixed. And those tickets need to get some priority. It's really important. The last thing I want to talk about, because it's one of my pet things I love that doesn't get as much attention in the real world as it should, although around our institution, there's a lot of people who are excited about it. That's the idea of formal methods, which again, is this idea of writing down a mathematical model of a system 
maybe writing that down as code in some mathematical modeling language, maybe just writing it with a pencil and paper, and then asking questions of that model, trying to verify properties of the system. This code won't crash, it won't corrupt memory, whatever it is you're trying to prove by literally proving things. This is usually not a validation technique. That is, it's hard to prove that a program meets the requirements. What it typically is is a verification technique. You'd like to prove that the program has properties of a successful system. And the nice thing about formal methods, like inspection, but not like testing, is that we can throw this at requirements, at design, at implementation, um, sure, you can test an implementation. It's hard to test requirements. It's hard to test design, but I can certainly prove properties about my requirements and design. I certainly can inspect my requirements and design. And so those are very, full, very powerful techniques for front end -y stuff. <sighs> Again, in the work I've done in software over the years, I've used some reasonably mixed version of quite a bit of inspection, a little bit of testing, a tiny bit of formal methods. And when I've got out the formal methods as part of my toolbox, they've been really pretty successful. And it's one of those things that I hope to do more of going forward. So there you have it, VNV, and a few things about VNV as it relates to open source. We really, really like to see the amazing things that are being done these days with open source projects and making sure that they're right. It's something more and more your customers, your users are gonna expect. It's more and more something your collaborators are gonna inspect. Is it expect is that there's some kind of VNV being done on your software as you build it. So please try to find ways to do that. Hopefully this was helpful. As always, stay safe and well out there. It's been great talking to you and I will talk to you again soon.